everyone. Welcome back to our podcast, No More Secrets. As always, I'm your niece, Katie Albrecht. And I'm your aunt, Mary Albrecht. And we are so excited to have my very, very, very best friend, Sista Chica, Jan <laughs> Leisure. Names, yeah. <laughs> who, Big title. <laughs> who is right here. Say hello to the viewers and to the... Hello, listeners and viewers. There's some listeners, too. And Jan Leisure is... Um, the mother to Dr. Jordan Leisure, who's been on our show three times now. And uh, I've just known the family since, well, for 30 years. And so I've known Dr. Jordan for since she was like nine or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how old she is now. She's how 30, did 43. 43. Wow. Yeah. So, so you've 30 known years. her for a long time. How, how did you guys meet? Was it at your old studio or no? She was we in met my at the center club. Yeah. She was in my step nice. class. Um, when you guys and, wore the spandex and, and when uh, I was doing three colors. three risers, baby three, <laughs> and she had shiny red tights and a black leotard and shiny or a red belt. Well, how what were you wearing a, though? A red headband, and a headband similar, <laughs> and a big red bow and leg warmers. That seems normal. Does that seem normal? Yeah, yeah that seems right. Yeah, <laughs> back then it was like late eighties. You know, mm. So yeah, what kind of outfits were you wearing though? I wore... Did um, you wear spandex and all those? I did. She yes, did. Did. I had thongs and that kind oh, of thing. Oh, yes, she did. She was hot. She was our hot teacher. I was nice. hot. Yeah, I started out a little chunky, but remember, I lost like 40 pounds. You were never chunky. Yeah, I was chunky when I first started there. Never say chunky to a chunky. <laughs> <laughs> Not to a chunky monkey. That's right. <laughs> chunky monkey. Speaking of monkeys, we also have Dunkle back. He's doing very, very well. Because he's a monkey. <laughs> Speaking of monkeys... <laughs> Doesn't he uh, look he's like, the best. Doesn't he look like a monkey? <laughs> he's yes. the sweetest. But anyway, Jan... He's a funky monkey. Jan Leisure, otherwise known as J. Lone Goddess, okay, is a mortgage broker right now. This That's her, your current career. I am. I'm a mortgage banker. And mortgage banker. Mortgage banker. At Diamond Residential Mortgage. And you've been doing that how many years? Since 1995. And she's called the Lone Goddess because she can get... Pretty much, she helps a lot of people get loans that that would have had a hard time, you know, otherwise. But you help them build their credit up, and you help them just get more stable and get everything they need. And I get shit done. She gets shit done. Yeah, <laughs> that's like your life catchphrase. I that's right. Yeah. That's gonna be my next tattoo. <laughs> I get shit done. And uh, I like that. No, but, but prior to that, you were you did a super saver. I was a syndicated columnist for thirty six years. Because she's like 150. I'm 150 Doesn't she look old. good? <laughs> <laughs> I taught junior high school English for 20 years. See what I mean? I taught college English and started the program at Columbia College from its inception. And I did that for 10 years. Oh, nice. And you were on the Phil Donahue show. I was on the Phil Donahue show. I was on 500 radio and TV shows. So I'm a celebrity, folks. Yes, we're and so I've honored. Lived countless lives, as <laughs> lived countless said. lives. Yes, yes yeah. that we that we are able to talk about and and cannot talk about certain things. Maybe we cannot, but um, that's why she's plying me with wine. Yeah, well, that's we're trying my, to juice it out of you. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Katie's hungover, and we're really proud of her. No. <laughs> but that's why I'm not drinking. I'm not trying to fuel the the. No one knows what's flame. in that pink cup. But that's mysterious true. clear liquid over hey, here look at my shirt and look at the cup that's pretty cool yeah they're, your they're cups. almost the same like exact size it. yeah hmm. well anyway um so mm, jan again is one of my very best friends but that camera she shut off. is that that camera shut off hey travis travis was that the bad one wait we don't have the fan are the fans on no um, I think this camera is off. It doesn't look... The red light's not on. Was it... Sorry to interrupt the conversation, but... We'll have, we well, can edit. Huh? Yeah, it's a good call. I don't know why it just shut off. Right, I'll keep an eye on it. Start recording now. Okay, yeah, thank you. So we'll just edit all that out and yeah, da-da-da. Okay. So okay. Where you left off and I can okay, it. okay. Go on. So, <laughs> Jen Leisure is one of my very best friends, but she also is the, to me, picture of optimism, but also realism. Okay? That's how mm-hmm. I see you. Thank you. Like, you're not falsely optimistic. Like, you work hard to make things happen. You get shit done. You get shit done for yourself. You get shit done for other people. 
I think of a word um, that comes to mind is resilience when I think of you because you've been knocked over so many times and you get back up and you keep trying and you do the same for others. You are constantly trying to help people better whether their lives. Whether they want it or not. Whether they, whether want, they want my help or not. <laughs> right. But you just, you're so hopeful. You're hopeful. And I always feel better when I'm around you because I feel like everything's going to be okay. Well, I because love you. Thank you for that, Mary. You understand life. More. I do feel good every time I'm around you too. I feel like you're you're easy to talk to, and then you just have so many stories and life experiences, <laughs> you know that it's just it's it's easy. It's easy talking with you and drinking oh, wine and you. stuff. Yeah, if I was drinking wine. <laughs> it would be it would be easy <laughs> if you were. <laughs> but I guess what what led me to believe good words. I thought so. Yeah, that um that I would well there's many things we we decided that we have to have her on at least five episodes because <laughs> there's many things to talk about with her but when you were telling me about the stories of you growing up and some of the things you got into when you were like three four five eighth grade whatever you know I was like wow your your joy of life and your verve for life was born right in it seems you know mm -hmm. but not only that your parents nurtured it and allowed it. So we had an episode called, you know, Nature versus Nurture. And mm -hmm. I see you as, as naturally um, optimistic and happy to be alive, okay? But also, you, it had to be nurtured. You know, you had to have people around you that allowed you to be that way and didn't try to squelch you and didn't try to make you I, I wouldn't have not. thought of that. I wouldn't have thought of that until you said that. But I, but I think you're right. You probably can crush that out of a being especially a, mm -hmm. a young baby you know or you know like if you're like your grandson's age for instance and then he's being told that everything he's doing is wrong when he talks to waitresses and introduces himself and orders things off the menu he's he our entertainment and he can't even speak english yet <laughs> <laughs> so but anyway so i thought you know resilience that's a word i mean optimism realistic optimism and then resilience if you get knocked down or if you see someone else does, you, you just want to help. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I guess I want to say, you know, tell us about, tell the listeners about your childhood, about your, your, you're an only child, where did you grow up, you know, where, you know, how, how was your, how was your young childhood before high school? So I'm an only child. My, my dad was Sicilian. He was kind of a godfather kind of guy. Can I say this so you didn't fuck with him? You, so that's how absolutely that's, can't kind, say that's that. kind of how I grew up. Yes, you can say so it. I, I couldn't say it or I could say it. You can. I can. You can. Okay. <laughs> and um, my da so my dad was very strict. My mom was kind of my support and my wingman. I don't know if I was an only child by I wasn't an only child by choice. I think my mom and dad wanted to have some other kids. I have another story about that. They were going to adopt twins, but they didn't. Because <gasps> that's that was, the other story. That was oh, yeah. I was not in favor of that. And. Mm -hmm. um, like we babies? Can, yeah, we can, yes. We okay. can talk about that another time. But um, okay. but I was an only child, and I don't, I used to, I think I used to want brothers and sisters maybe more as I got older than when I was younger. I think I appreciated being the only person in my mom and dad's life, but I don't know that I ever consciously really thought about that. Um, my dad was pretty strict, so I think I was a good kid. But I was also very um, um, entrepreneurial. And because I was an only child, my mom and dad didn't let me cross the street. So when I, we moved to Des Plaines when I was two, and I couldn't cross the street, but I was a good talker, I would holler at the kids across the street and I would say, Hi, I'm Jan. Can you come over and play? <laughs> <laughs> at age two. <laughs> and now and now at age 72, my license plate says, Hi, I'm Jan. That's so, funny. So that started when I was about two years old. That's, See, it was kind of born right in. Yeah, right? so it was. It, pro no. it probably was born right into me, and I th and maybe I was entertaining, um, like my two year old grandson Jameson. We find him very entertaining, so nobody um, rains on his parade. Yeah, because know? it's so fun. Yeah, it's so so it's so entertaining. So we just kind of let him go. And are um, your parents sociable people? I was going to ask that. My too, mom yeah. and dad. My mom and dad were very sociable. My dad was in sales. My dad was in the liquor business my whole life. He was also he was also in the Olympics when he was 14 with oh, the Chicago Youth sport? Authority. Boxing. Nice. And, which is another reason why he didn't fuck with my dad. Yep. <laughs> well, literally, yeah. Italian. L literally. And so he was a Sicilian boxer and um hey Travis. He I, just kind of did what he said. I'm sorry, but I'm I'm really warm. 
would you be able to crack this window, Travis? <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but I can't take it. I'm like sweating already from the inside out. Oh. You know? Yeah. And I'm not even hungover. As I say, I <laughs> I feel great. Um, <laughs> so anyway, this is Travis. <laughs> and uh, if you just, I think if it's, it's up, I think it already is. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, is that okay? Probably you need it too, right? Um, well, I have my house at 66, so. Yeah, exactly. I keep it at 63, so Ooh. it helps. But, okay, so back to your parents. With Your dad was kind of a talker. You kind of have to be to be in sales, I think. Was your mom also, or did they kind of balance I, well, my mom out? Well, my, um, my mom was very smart. She was a bridge player. Um, and she was, she was sociable, but not like a social butterfly. Mm-hmm. My dad was really more... You know, I would say my dad was more the was more the social one, mm-hmm. and my mom was more the follower. But my mom was still; she was very smart. Got a job when I when I um, was eighteen. She stayed home with me, and t- so I had that luxury. Mm-hmm. So I grew up at my in my house. I didn't have to go to daycare. Um, I thought my job was shopping until I was about six or seven when I had to go to school <laughs> 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 because we got up every day and went to Shoppers World or someplace. Yeah, you know? yeah. And um, when I was eighteen, my mom got a job my dad told her that she was too old when she was 48 to go oh. um and get a job that nobody would would hire her because she and her friend were old bags oh geez. so at 48 they they lied about their age they created a resume of their previous jobs and they both got jobs at exe- as executive secretaries and within five years my mom was running the company so my mom was wow. was very Talk smart about resilience yeah, was my mom bitch. was you know, yeah. yes, she was. She was a badass <laughs> bitch. Yes, <laughs> sounded like anyway. Yeah, for sure. That's really impressive, though, to to work your way up and then, you know, run the thing. It's pretty great, especially going against your husband, who says you're an old bag, and she's like, "I'll show you." That's right. <laughs> <You're> an old <laughs> bag. <laughs> that's what they. That's I remember when he said that. You know, I was like, "Oh, wow." So I picture you as a young kid. Okay, you had friends. I had a lot of friends. A lot of friends. You were. Um, Friends. I had to have friends because I had no siblings. You had no siblings. Okay, and quickly, how old were you when your parents thought they might adopt those two uh, foster kids? Um, I think I was about four, and they had some very good friends who had who had four kids of their own, and they also were foster parents. And it was actually he, actually the dad was a veterinarian, and the mom was a friend of my mom's, and they they were foster parents, and they were fostering two brand new newly born twins. And they wanted my mom and dad to adopt these two little girls. Okay. So. And how old were they? They were they were day, days old, weeks okay. old. You know, I mean, when, when they were like several months old, they were going to be open for adoption. And they wanted my mom and dad to adopt these kids. You know, and I I heard my mom and dad talking about it. And I said, no fucking way. <laughs> no. <laughs> at, at age four. I, know. That's, I think that's what I was thinking. As I look back on it, that's what I was saying. You know, and I was... I'm, <laughs> and I and really I'm a very like lovable person, yeah, right? And I'm yeah. a very welcoming person. I have I have two biological daughters and probably thirty that are not. And Correct. um <laughs> but when I was four I did not want any competition. And I can remember saying to my mom and dad, they cannot come in my room. They can't share my stuff, they can't have my toys. You know, and I, I put sort of put my foot down at four and they didn't adopt them. <laughs> <laughs> but the other people did. The okay. foster parents did adopt them, so it worked out. It worked out well for so, them. See, already at age four, you're like, you knew what you wanted and that's what you didn't want. And you're right. like, no fucking way. You're saying fucking way at age <laughs> four. I mean, sort of, basically. That's admirable. Uh, yeah, my dad would have, would have uh, knocked me to the other side of the room if I really said that. But <laughs> Exactly. But, but I made my wishes known. But then, okay, but then when, <laughs> you, were, very clear, yeah. when you were three, okay, here's your entrepreneurial spirit. spirit. Let's talk about the flowers. That was when you were three. Okay, so when I was three, say three or three and a half, I had a, I had a, my best friend lived one house away, and her mom and dad, this is kind of sad. So her mom and dad would put her outside. Her mom was very OCD. I didn't realize this till later in life. Okay. Her mom was very OCD and would not let anybody in the house. So she would get my friend all dressed up, all washed and cleaned and dressed up and hair braided put her out on the porch with a bag lunch and then not let her back in the house even to go to the bathroom oh and so she pretty much lived at my house okay and she she um she sort of grew up at my house so she was left to her own devices which was me <laughs> <laughs> so i said let's make some money because my, <laughs> and my dad and i will tell you this my dad 
Um, my dad taught me about money when I was very, very young. And so I could, I, you know, I mean, I could count and I could add money. And we had change back in the day before digital money. And, he, and so I wanted to make some money. Did he also teach you how to manage it pretty young? He did. Yes, he did. That's impressive. He did. My mom taught me how to spend it. And my dad taught me how to make it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, we, my parents had uh, uh, roses on trellises, tons and tons of roses in, in our yard and displays. So I took uh, my mom's scissors. My mom and dad let me do this. And mm-hmm. we, we uh, cut all my mom and dad's roses down. And then we had like a little assembly line in the kitchen and we got my mom's Reynolds wrap mm-hmm. and we made um, floral, we made bouquets of the, of the flowers and we went and we sold them up and down our block on Webster Lane in Des Plaines and uh, sold all of them. For hmm. a quarter, you said. It, yeah, which for, at the time yeah, for a quarter, which is a lot like, of money. Yeah. It's probably like 10 bucks. Yeah. I don't know. Back. Oh, so your little yeah. three-year-old showing up at the door. 69 years ago, right? We were so cute. We were like, would you like to buy our flowers? <laughs> <laughs> And it yeah. worked, <laughs> and, it, and it did. So we had a little flower business going, and then when we um, when we ran out of roses, which that was okay because my mom and dad put the okay on that. My friend's dad, who owned a company called Neater Trucking, so if anybody in that family is listening, right, they'll they'll remember this. <laughs> and their dad ordered tulip bulbs from Holland, the prior year. And he probably paid three dollars a bulb for the tulips and planted them all over their around their house. Mm-hmm. And I got my mom's cuticle scissors because we ran out of roses, <laughs> so we thought it was okay to get the tulips. And we we um, cut down all the tulips the day they bloomed. <laughs> oh, After the gosh. dad the dad went to work, and then we cut down all the tulips, and then we went and we sold those. But they didn't seem as pretty as the roses, so we sold them for a nickel a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they were more expensive, yeah. Even than the though roses. they were more expensive than the roses, that's right, that's right. And when the dad came home, and he, I think all day long he was pining to see his tulips, and he opened his car door, and they were all, they were all cut off. <laughs> oh my gosh! And he, yeah, he got furious, and he called my, he called my house, and I could hear my dad on the other end of the phone going, "Okay, okay." And you want me to kill her now? What do you? How do you want me to handle this? <laughs> and I thought my dad was going to hang up and just beat the crap out of me, but he, you know, but he didn't because he was he, he, he was laughed. laughing. Yeah, he thought he was I was like, very yeah, entrepreneurial. Go he's like, like, you go, girl. That's my baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would have done. Salesman of the year. That's right. That's right. Salesman of the year. So yeah, so I was entrepreneurial from the time very, I was little. We very. went from we went from that on to selling the toys that we didn't want anymore on a card table on the corner. Okay. So we had like the first garage sale, child garage sale. And um, people would buy my stuff to get to my mom and dad. So it's a story that you don't know. Because. I, so I was selling um, all my old toys. <laughs> Brand like new. For a nickel and a penny, whatever, a dime. And there was a, a company called Peter Pan Photography. And they would come around and they'd knock on your door and they'd want to make an appointment to take pictures of your kids, like right, family pictures, like sure. school pictures and stuff. Oh yeah, door to door was door to door back then, right? right? They were so they were door to door. I did potholders too, but that was later. Mm. So. <laughs> Random. Yeah, I know. I have that on my resume. Um, so the Peter Pan photographer would come, and the the guy spent ten dollars. He bought everything on our table before he went in and tried to make the sale to my mom. Okay. So that was pretty good. So we had wow. a $10 sale. Wow. And then did probably you get, 1953. Did you get pictures taken? We did. Yes. <laughs> My mom bought his pictures. So yes. so that was a good move on his part. Yeah, he did good too. But yeah. That's he did. And then impressive. how old were you when your parents decided they wanted to move to a lake house in Arlington Heights, right? So I was in seventh grade. So they when I was in seventh there. grade, my mom and dad. They have lakes there? They have well, lakes it wasn't really, Heights. it wasn't like a lake house. It wasn't like a Lake Michigan house or a Wisconsin lake house or Lake Geneva house. It was like a man-made lake house. Okay. It was called Lake Briarwood. Mm-hmm. And, uh, when I, but I didn't know my mom and dad were doing this. So my mom and dad, my dad liked to go out and look at new construction and look at houses and stuff. That was kind of his hobby. And they went out and they found a house in Lake Briarwood that was, um, I lived in a very little house when I was growing up, like a 900 square foot um, house with a basement, you know, two bedroom, one bath house with a garage on a corner. And they wanted a bigger house. So they found this house that was really nice. It was a tri-level on the lake. um, Hmm. And they put a down payment on it. And then they brought me there after. And they said, ta-da, this is where we're moving next year, you know, when this house is built. And I'm like, 
no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> just like when she was four. I know, it's like, <laughs> no. Seems to be a theme, yeah. <laughs> well, I had all my friends, right? right? So I, I was an only child living in the same house all these years, going mm-hmm. to the same schools with the same kids. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to leave my friends and I didn't want to leave my school. Mm-hmm. And I... um. Like I don't remember myself being like like a tantrum kind of kid, but I was, I was pretty significantly um, strong. Strong, about it. yeah, about about my opinion, and I said no. And my mom and dad, uh, to their, I mean, to their credit, you know, I mean, they didn't pull. In retrospect, when I see kids that get pulled out of school in eighth grade or when they're in high school and they have to leave their friends and their support system, it turn, you know, it turns out badly for them. So I think maybe that's maybe that's why I can be resilient. Because my mom and dad listened to you, listened to me, and they they mm-hmm. recognized that. So we stayed in our house. And then my but, dad tore down like our breezeway and rebuilt our house. But didn't so you we, say to them, "You can go, but I'm staying." Yeah, you here. can go, but I'm staying. <laughs> you're in seventh grade. Yeah, I'll stay. I'll stay with whoever buys the house. <laughs> <laughs> Get a house and a kid. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good deal. I go with the house. Two for peeps. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she was so you were so adamant about it. But my, I mean, my, so it's strong. surprising though because my my dad. I mean, you did yeah. not fuck with my dad. Yeah. So and it was he, interesting that they because my dad put money down on it. My dad went and got his money back. See, that's yeah. They no. yeah, and maybe that would have shattered you because you are so social, and you had so many friends. And I would have been so, driving at fourteen, right? I would have been <laughs> driving, driving back. back. Driving back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting that. Um, you're talking about like the, the listening part because I feel like there's people like myself or, the, or you know others that had uh, a parent or two that just didn't you know pay attention to them or didn't or there's like doesn't give them like the respect that they deserve so then they don't know how to deal with it but then you on the other hand had these like awesome parents that had their their own stuff going on but they were like they were great to you well my dad was a hard ass you know I mean I, I will tell you that there were times when I got reprimanded for no reason, okay. right? And it, looking back, like, I mean, I, w- I was a really good kid. I was very respectful. Um, I knew that m- my dad had a gun in his, <laughs> in his nightstand, okay? Nice. <laughs> and I don't think that he would hesitate to use it, at least in my head, you know? Yeah. Um, you've seen the pictures of my dad and his friends in my office, right? I don't think I have. Well, you'll, you'll know exactly have, I what I mean it. when I, when you, well, it's like, the, imagine the Goodfellas, and that was my dad and his friends. Okay. Mr. Yeah. And, um, Mr. Italian. You so know. you did not, you didn't mess with them. You know, you pretty much did what he said. But there, I mean, and, and he was very strict. So there were times, I'll, I'll tell you a time, like when I was eight years old, we had some friends over, just neighbors. Some neighbors were over downstairs, and my mom had me upstairs, and I had a bath, and I had a robe on, and I can remember I had on these little, like, red leather slippers and I went downstairs and I said something that my dad didn't like and my dad hit me and, and I slid across the basement floor so it wasn't all roses and tulips <laughs> right because you sold them it wasn't all roses and tulips because I sold those the fact that that but, actually is a literal thing yeah, is but so to funny. but to um to your point you know, there. I mean, there were there were always there's always ups and downs. You know, course, for everybody. Yeah. You know, but you and felt so. safe. Like besides well, being I, thrown except across, for, the... except for and it was so serious that the two visitors that were there. You know, I mean, and they were neighbors that I knew that I grew up with. I mean, they were really uncomfortable and they got up and left. Wow. See, and today they would call DCFS. No, no, not on my dad. They would. <laughs> okay, they still wouldn't. <laughs> they still no. They wouldn't have called DCFS on my dad. But it would have been that would have been the kind of thing that maybe would have happened. You know. Jan said that people are still afraid of her dad, and he's been dead. He's been for dead for decades. thirty for thirty one years. Yeah. <laughs> he leaves an impression. Sounds like. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna go out, right? You go out like that. That's. How was it impressive? Um, this is not really. I don't know if this is on the topic or, or not, but. How was it for you when your when your parents ultimately passed away? Was that a hard grieving process? Um, so my so this is maybe this is another thing that this is really part of I think what Mary's driving at. So when I was fifteen, um, my dad had a massive coronary. Okay. And he was at home, and he came out of the bedroom. And it was kind of, kind of like a on TV kind of thing, you know. And he was kind of clutching his chest, chest and he said, "I'm having a heart attack. Call nine one one." So my mom and I called 911. I mean, even my dog was freaked out, you know, and, and the the um, ambulance came. He didn't pass out or anything, but the ambulance came, and they backed into our garage. I had, And I think I had PTSD for ambulances probably for the next 25 years. I'm sure. Right, because it was real, that was really traumatic for me. 
Did you call 911? You were I the did, one actually yeah, called? Yeah, did, yeah. That and alone is traumatizing. I've done it before, too, and it's, it's scary. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't even remember. I don't. I did it, but I don't even remember that part of it. I just remember kind of standing there while my dad was in the chair. and t- Like, my dad still was telling me what to do, and he was the one that was having the heart attack. Mm-hmm. So they got him in the ambulance, and they brought him to um, to a hospital in Des Plaines. And he was in the hospital in an oxygen tent for 90 days. So this was before they even had uh, the oxygen that went in your nose. You know, he was literally in an oxygen tent, right? And my dad was Catholic, so they called the priest. And so we were all there, and the priest came, and the priest asked my dad if he wanted to um, do confession. Mm -hmm. And my dad said, if I'm dying that fast, we don't have time. (laughs) Okay. So he said, all right, no. I don't want to waste any time. (laughs) I only have a few minutes left. Yeah, we don't have have that much time. I don't have too much to confess, which was true. (laughs) Um, but my dad was in, so that, that was on, that was on, um, December 26th when I was 15. And before that, on November 16th, my boyfriend, who was my childhood friend, um, had his leg amputated because he had osteogenic sarcoma. Oh my gosh. So on November 16th, my boyfriend had his leg amputated and on December 26th, my dad had a massive coronary, and my dad was still in the hospital on my 16th birthday, which was January 26th. And um, my boyfriend's family had a surprise party for me on my 16th birthday. So November, December, and January for all those 90 days, those were kind of the things that were happening. So I spent a lot of time in the hospital as a visitor yeah. from the time my boyfriend had his leg amputated until my yeah. till really beyond my 16th birthday until um, probably February of that wow. year. So that strengthened you? I think so. I because, think so. Because, well, first of all, you sh- they survived. Mm-hmm. And, and he's still alive, by the way. My the boyfriend, boyfriend that had his leg amputated is still alive. So. Oh, wow. And, the, and so getting back to... Katie's question, did that give you an appreciation for his life after that, your dad's, up until he died? Yes. I th- so my dad had a lot of, um, he had a lot of heart attacks. Like he, this was before, like before people like Mary and before trainers and before people would say like if you go through cardio rehab, he had cardio rehab in a sense, but my dad was a smoker. He was Italian. He was a foodie. He loved to cook. He loved to eat. He loved to eat everything that was not good for him. Mm-hmm. And if I would say to him, Dad, instead of a pork chop sandwich, you know, why don't you have a salad? And my dad would say, and why don't you go fuck yourself? So. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be a theme in that family. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So, th- so that's kind of how things went. And that was for a long time. So that was from the time I was 15 until my dad passed away when I was 40. And um, I would I would say that every single time he had some kind of an episode, you know, I was always afraid that my dad was going to die. So he we spent mm-hmm. he was either great, right, or there was in some kind of an emergency. And one time he had a heart attack in Las Vegas when I was mm-hmm. teaching when I was twenty one, and my mom called and she said your father had a heart attack, but don't come here. So I left school and I went and got John Leisure, and we went to O'Hare Field. We got in a plane and we went to. Vegas and my dad was at Sunrise Hospital so my dad was released from the hospital to go home immediately right and go to the hospital so I walked into the hospital they didn't know I was coming you know my dad's like why are you here and I said because you had a heart attack and my dad said go out in the hall and I went out in the hall and instead of going home we went to the Stardust and my dad stayed up all night playing blackjack (laughs) and then he took me to a Jerry Vale concert and then we went home and he went to the hospital so um, but th- if, as a as a young person, even though even though your parent thinks that they're invincible or acts like that or give you know gives that impression, which he did, mm-hmm. you're still you know, like when you have a parent that has that I think that kind of a, like some kind of an illness or something you know where you think like every minute they're gonna be gone. Mm-hmm. You you I like I feel like I had PTSD when I was in in Vegas mm-hmm. as an example with my dad. I had to go change my tickets. Um, and I went, I don't know, I went to a travel agency, like in another hotel across the strip. And while I was there on my way back, I heard an ambulance. Well, I didn't realize that in Vegas, their ambulances are constant because people are 
kind of dropping like flies. There's accidents and there's, you know, there's a lot of people there. So there's always things happening. And of course, I thought the ambulance was for my dad. So I ran like two miles from, this is before I was running. <laughs> so I ran two <laughs> miles from the travel agency back to the hotel, all the way up to the room looking for my dad. Couldn't find him. Went back down. And these are huge. The hotels are, like they're huge. They're like, we're talking like blocks. Yeah. So... I went back and I found him at one of the tables. This was like at, you know, mm. early in the morning, found him at one of the tables still playing. And you're you know, like, like white as a sheet, you know, he, sweating. And and he wanted you to have a good oh. time since you came out there. Yeah, well, I I don't think he was planning on coming home even if I didn't go there. Oh. You know, I think that's why he wanted me to go in the hall. He didn't want me to say in front of the doctors, you know, that that I was going to stay there or something, you know. Okay. Mm. So your mom was a widow for 20 years? or so um my dad died in 1989 and my mom died in 2010 so yeah 21 years okay and so did she ever date again or no nope. go you know no nope. she never did anybody mm -mm. Or, and how did she do as a single as an as a widow like did she fall apart no or she, she my mom well my mom was really strong no she was really good she um she did live with me probably from the time she was like my age until she passed away but that really that was more like for convenience and because I was an only child and she helped Jordan and Jade were a little bit older but she helped with Jordan and Jade mm -hmm. and and we had a very good relationship so um it was that was it was my pleasure to have my mom mm -hmm. live with me but my mom had her own life too I mean my mom had a lot of friends my mom played bridge mm -hmm. but she didn't like old people so she <laughs> her friends were all more like my age okay you know and then she would actually kind of like me so my friends are all jordan and jade's ages and you yeah you're my oldest friend no. I'm, the, I'm the oldest that's funny <laughs> wow i'm used to being the youngest <laughs> you know you do hang out with the older people right the older, older crowd you. i do mm. yeah even dogs <laughs> they're <True>. old <laughs> but i think it, so. to, to your point mary i would say that going through the situation with my boyfriend who had cancer and my dad who had a heart attack and you have to you've got to come back with that from that if you're going to cope with it and I didn't have any siblings to which I don't know is a good thing or a bad thing okay it depends on the siblings yes right? to, yeah I don't so you don't know what you don't know so I had to kind of handle that myself you know I can re and I can remember like many many times driving to the hospital uh, at many different ages and saying to myself you know kind of saying an internal prayer and going like you know pre please god you know let my dad live until i'm 21 and i can handle it okay or let me live until i'm 30 and i can handle it you know and then mm. the last time was let me live until i'm 40 you know or let him live until i'm 40 so that i can handle and you, it you and know? you were 40 and i was 40 when my dad died when yeah but it, and it was it was very very hard hard on jordan it was hard on yeah. jordan yeah it was a, that was a, a very pivotal um pivotal time in her life she was super How close old was she she was in sixth grade Oh yeah, and my dad was her. My dad was her point. guy. Well, my dad was. It was worse than if her dad would have died. Mm. For mm -hmm. her, yeah, and they lived around the corner, right? Yeah, they lived around the corner. My so my mom. I grew up in Des Plaines, and then um, we, my uh, husband and I built a house in Libertyville when I was twenty six, and I didn't know any better than I could build my own house, so I did that. Mm -hmm. And then See? my mom and dad. <laughs> 26 um, and there was another there was a lot around the corner from us and so my dad um there was two lots available and my dad said well if you let me have the one on the water you know then we'll move there too so okay. i took the lesser of the two lots <laughs> my mom and dad lived on the water but they lived, but again lived right around the corner well yes but yeah. it made up for lake briarwood so, so see you owed them yeah <laughs> hmm. so what was your high school besides the the heart attack and the husband or the boyfriend having um cancer high school for me was probably like like the most fun of my life like that I did where I wasn't like just creating the fun yeah, okay you know it was really fun and it was new and it was fresh and it was nice to meet like I went to a huge high school so I went to Maine West mm. my high school class had about 1500 kids in it my freshman year wow. it was before they built Maine South and split our class up so I knew I knew a lot of people and I was the tallest girl in the in the high school so everybody knew who I was <laughs> I understand <laughs> whether, <that. laughs> whether I whether I wanted them to know or not um, um it was like it was kind of like a Molly Ringwald movie really yeah okay. you know I mean that's that's just that's what it was like it was the 60s and it was it was fun and there was a lot of music did you notice so it, it, 
I'm getting the impression you didn't have any confidence issues back then. But did you notice it with like some of your friends or anything that that were were a little bit more shy or So the the weird thing is so that's interesting that you would say that and my ex-husband would this is later in life, okay, reflecting back would say sometimes like negative things about my friends cuz I I'm oh. still friends with a lot of the friends I was friends with in high school. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, and I would say, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like he would say this person was, I, I don't know, antisocial or jealous, or he'd just make some, make something up, mm-hmm. but I never noticed any of those things. And I don't know if that's because I'm very outgoing and I was unintentionally a leader. Mm-hmm. And I also had my driver's license when I was a sophomore, so I had a car. And oh, yeah, so, so you were, I just you said, were let's do it. Friend, yeah, yes. I said, let's do okay. it, you know, and, and we, we just did it. And we did, you know, we did a lot of things. Yeah. So, um, so it was, it was a lot of fun. I think, you know, could I have applied myself more academically? I think I could have. I mean, I was really smart. I got okay grades. Um, but my parents, my parents didn't pressure me academically. I mean, I never got any really bad grades. I probably could have done better. Mm-hmm. I probably could have gone to a better school. Um, I went to Northern, which is an okay, you know, an okay college, but I think I could mm-hmm. have gone maybe to a more challenging school and maybe I would have done things a little bit differently in my life, but you don't realize that when you're you became a yeah, teacher and yeah. right? I really yeah. wanted to go to I really wanted to go to law school. Was um was Northern where you got still your time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's your uh, hundredth wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. Um. So, in high school, the person that you were dating that you got in a fight with, and then you got grounded, mm-hmm. was that the boyfriend? The yes, that like, was the boyfriend. So like, okay, that boy. Did we friends. share that story on the podcast? Not we yet. didn't yet. We didn't yet. No, but I'll tell you. <laughs> Great so, segue. Yes. Yeah, so here we go. So that, but there, the, beyond that, he and I were friends since I was two years old, because I had a friend who lived next door to him. So we used to go down, you know, down the street. So I knew his parents. His parents knew me from the time I was really little, and um, I used to be very frustrating to him. He used to go into his house like when he was five and I was four, and he would say that Jan. You know, he was very frustrated and his mom would be, well, you better be nice to her because maybe you would marry her someday. <laughs> I didn't know this until like 15 years later. Mm-hmm. And um, later, so we were always friends. Later when we were in high school and we started dating when I was 15 and he was 16, I was the one that discovered that there was something wrong with his leg. Mm. So that's kind of, that's the background of that story. And we were in the displays Theater and I got up to go to the bathroom or get popcorn and I'm so tall, okay, as you know, like the skinny part of my leg kind of brushed against his knee. And he was a very he was a very chill kind of guy, but he was six foot nine, so his legs were very long. So my my leg touched his leg just a little bit and he winced kind of like I hit him in the leg with an axe. So it was very it was quiet in the theater, right? So I didn't say anything and I went and I came back and then afterwards, you know, I said to him, What's wrong with you? And he was he was really like pissed that I sort of like I heard him on purpose and I didn't Mm -hmm. so I said well what's wrong with you and he said well I don't know it's probably this or it's probably that and I said well did you tell your coach and he said I'm not going to tell my coach because he won't let me play and I said well did you tell your parents and he said I'm not going to no I'm not going to tell my parents because they'll tell the coach and then I can't play he's a basketball player Mm -hmm. so I said I was only 15 and I said well take me home because I couldn't drive then and I said if you don't tell your mom and dad in five days, then I'm going to have my mom bring me over to your house and I'm going to tell your mom and dad because you need to go to the doctor and see what's wrong with you. Oh, good for you. So he couldn't stand to be away from me, so he told his mom and dad right away. <laughs> <laughs> and then you find out that he had... Well, and the then cancer, he was yeah. really lucky and they found a doctor at Lutheran General. I mean, this is a, very long ago, right? Mm-hmm. And the doctor, they diagnosed him with osteogenic sarcoma, which is, you know, bone cancer, really bad. And um, the doctor saved his life. The doc- and this was in March. And the doctor was able to give him cobalt treatments, which is like radiation, to keep it contained until November. This was in March. So he had all summer long, like to hang out and ride his bike and play basketball. And my mom and dad had a boat, so we went on our boat. 
And then it was in November that he had his leg amputated. And then he got his artificial wow. leg on my birthday for my surprise birthday party. So that's why it was kind wow. of like my life was kind of like a kind of like a movie a little bit, you know. Yeah, you for did sure. I mean, there was ups and downs, things, but, yeah. you know, but there were some big things, big you know. Things. Yeah. So let's hear the grounding story, though. <laughs> okay, so the grounding story was same boyfriend, and we were going to go to homecoming. And we were in his car. We had some kind of a... Was this pre-amputation uh, or... No, at post. This, okay. had be, this was probably post. So I think I was 16 and we had some kind of an argument. And instead of like dropping me off at my house and leaving like any normal boy would do if you had an argument, he came into my house. So he mm. follows me into the house and my dad, who was a very social and a very great host, said, do you want, do you want an Italian beef sandwich? <laughs> And you're like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, he's leaving, you know? And he goes, oh, yeah, I'll have one. And you think he did that just to piss me off. Like, mm-hmm. so he wasn't leaving and he stayed at my house. <laughs> and I was, I was furious. So I don't even remember what I said, but my mom and dad, my dad was like really mad at me for wanting him to leave. And I don't know if I was mean to him or something, you know, and I got grounded. So I got you grounded. Got, you got grounded. So I got grounded, <laughs> but... I shouldn't have, right? right? It was it was totally it was totally unwarranted this particular mm-hmm. issue. So I couldn't go to homecoming and then I didn't even tell my friends that I got grounded and I couldn't go to homecoming. I told them that I was going to homecoming with somebody else because I was so mad at my boyfriend that got me in trouble <laughs> that I wanted him to think that I had a date with somebody else. That's the thing I didn't tell you. Okay. So I said I was going to the Notre Dame homecoming and instead I went in my mom and dad's basement. So there was nothing to do in my mom and dad's basement because there was no television, right? Mm -hmm. And this was before Nintendo. So I didn't didn't have anything to do. There was no cell phones. No phones. And I couldn't call anybody, even if I had a... I did have a phone down there, right? We had a landline down there. But I couldn't call anybody because I lied and I told Mm -hmm. everybody that I was at the Notre Dame homecoming. (laughs) So I I had completely isolated myself. So... After a few minutes of thought and, you know, decisive thought and trying to decide what was I going to do to to take up my time, I went and got a bottle of champagne because my dad was in the liquor <laughs> business, right? So there that was, there was no uh, no no um, shortage of alcohol in my house. And, and I never smoked, but I went and got my mom's cigarettes. My mom and dad both smoked. And I got an ashtray and I got a crystal. I got a crystal ashtray and a crystal champagne glass. <laughs> and I lit a cigarette and I sat down there and I was said, oh... Okay, and I <laughs> and that's how I was going to pass the time. Like I didn't know what I was going to do next, but then after I finished a glass of champagne, this is where my reflexes weren't that fast, and I heard my dad's footsteps on the stairs. And before I could, before I could act fast enough, to like to get rid of the cigarette and get rid of the champagne glass, I still had him in my hands, and my dad came around the corner from the stairs and he looked at me and he didn't say my name though he didn't say my name and he didn't yell at me he started kind of laughed a little bit so I laughed in return I'm like (laughs) (laughs) and then he goes Evelyn that's my mom's name and my mom came running then and then I got grounded extra yeah Yeah. they they took away the cigarettes they took away the champagne and I got some extra days on my grounding and so did anybody I couldn't even tell anybody right I could never tell anyone nobody knew they still thought you went to the Notre Dame homecoming they still thought I went to the Notre Dame homecoming (laughs) and because there weren't iPhones right I didn't have to show evidence (laughs) right yeah you didn't have to post anything on Facebook right but because by the time you would have gotten everything developed you could have broke up with that kid anyways you know she, I just picture you down there with your legs up like I this. I did. I was sitting on you the know. couch. What a disappointment to not be able to tell <laughs> your friends about this because this is hilarious. You know, like I don't even know if Jordan and Jade know this story. <laughs> They're gonna know now. They're gonna know now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you're like, what's up, Dad? <laughs> pull up a chair. <laughs> you know, when somebody gives you that little like laugh, like it, and you don't know, like. You don't know exactly what the situation is, no, so you laugh too. Just laugh right? too yeah. You just laugh too. That's a very good visual, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. That's so funny. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's out of a movie too. I know. It I was say. funny. It was funny yeah. then and it's still it's still pretty funny now. Yeah, so I love that. Where did you meet John Leisure? So John Leisure is her ex husband. I He's met John Leisure passed. in college. Oh, in college. In at college. Northern. At Northern. And did you go there to be a teacher? No. No. I went 
I went, I actually, I was accepted at the University of Chicago. My mom and dad wouldn't let me go there. My dad wouldn't let me go there because even then it was a bad neighborhood. Okay. So my dad didn't want to worry about me. I got accepted at UCLA where wow. I really wanted to go because I wanted to be a California girl because of the Beach Boys, you know. Of course. And <laughs> that's Obviously. what was playing when my, when my dad took the champagne away from me. She'll have fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Till her daddy takes her champagne away. T-Rod away. Yeah, right? right? T- so T-Bird. T-Bird, you're T-Bird. T-Rod. So uh, my dad... My dad really did like a head game on me and he said, well, you can go there, but you know, you can only come home once a year because we can't afford to travel out there. We Mm -hmm. can't afford to have you come back, which really was pretty much a lie. And I think my mom and dad would have moved out there Mm -hmm. if I had gone to school out there. Mm -hmm. But they, um, they pulled one over on me. So instead I went to Northern and at the time I was dating somebody else at the time, um, who actually was, was very hot guy. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> he's still out there. He's still he's out there. there. He's still out there. His name is Joe, and um, he he uh, he and I dated pretty much my whole senior year, and he went to uh, he went to the University of Illinois at Chicago, and um, but he was he was kind of a hot rod guy, and he wanted to always come to school and bring me home for the weekend. And I, I literally was kind of, I was, it was in an accident with him before I went to school, like when I was, when I was a senior, not, it, it wasn't his fault. We were in like a head on collision and, um, it wasn't his fault. And he really, he saved me actually this before seatbelts. Mm. And he said, these people are going to hit us, get up, put your legs up and hang on to me in the steering wheel. And I did, and this guy was really strong. And, uh, I, he, the, he had a, he had a 55 Chevy and the steering wheel bent. That's how hard he was <gasps> holding on to it. Oh my God. And it was wow. one of those things. It was like a movie where you could see the glass just shatter. You know, it was, it was crazy. So, wow. but that being said, even though he saved me in that instance, he was really, he was really a fast driver and it really made me nervous. Mm-hmm. So I really, I cared about him a lot, but I didn't want to come home every weekend. So I broke up with him and I wanted to, I wanted to stay at school and then I got bored, you know, and then I met John Leisure. So, okay. And John Leisure was tall. And John Fisher was tall. So he fit. <laughs> this whole story building up to, I got bored, so then I met this, this guy, the father of my kids. <laughs> he was just something to do for decades. <laughs> So John Leisure was tall, so that's what <laughs> drew. He was not. Well, I mean, he was tall. He was nice, you know. He was handsome. Hmm. At, you know, for sure. Enough. And then, so then how long did you guys date before you got married? Well, we dated for two years. And I, so if you were to ask me why did I get married, I got married because my parents didn't, didn't, um, didn't forbid me to get married. Mm. And I didn't want to hurt his feelings. And didn't your dad want grandkids? Give, give me more, more wine. <laughs> See? Yeah, you got, got me, Mary. <laughs> I got her. I just. Um, well, but I didn't know that. Oh, so I thought it was... because no, I didn't know oh, that. Okay. So because no, 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 good. good okay. So because this, I think I think this all goes back to my dad having the heart attack. If my dad hadn't had a heart attack, my life would have been a lot different. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably were, and I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you never know. I mean, would it have been better? Would it have not been better? I don't mm-hmm. know. But because um, because my dad had the heart attack, I did not know, and I didn't even. I didn't even come to this realization probably for 35 years after, after this, that my dad every day, and my dad I'm sure every day was afraid that he was going to die, but he never gave me that impression and he never had that conversation with me, right? Because okay. my dad, well, you know, like I kind of live large and I'm like, go big or go home. And that's how my dad was, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. more like on steroids. Yeah. And um, he was, I think, just living every day like it was his last. Okay. But what I didn't know was that my dad wanted to see grandchildren. Okay. Never t- never said that to me. Maybe it was subconscious. Maybe. No, I think it was. Con- I think it was pretty conscious. But he never said it to me because I because then he didn't want me to just run out and get knocked up, right? So. But it was subconscious on your part that maybe you wanted to get a family started. No, so no, 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 really no, no. That was even... no. That was okay. totally negatory. No. So you just got married because that's what other people well, did. Well, what or... John Leisure proposed, we were with another couple that were friends of ours and we went and saw the saw the movie Romeo and Juliet you know and he proposed to me and he had he had he had a ring and so I like I you know me and you've known me for a long time like I have a really hard time hurting people's feelings mm-hmm. right 
So I didn't want to hurt his feelings, so I said yes. <laughs> Again, great reason to get married. <laughs> I know, right? So, well, I was really young. You know, I was 19. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. so... Oh, I and I don't think college, that I yeah. I don't think at the time I was really thinking of the enormity of the decision. Do you know what I mean? It was just kind of like, well, okay, all right, thanks. I, I like jewelry. You know, that's good. <laughs> I like, th- yeah. I like this. Yeah, this is this is nice. So we'll see. Look at you. Like you have your pretty ring, and you look at it, right? I do like. I like my all pretty right, ring. Yeah. Like, and I'm not a okay. jewelry person. Yeah. But I was thinking, isn't that around the time when Jordan first got engaged too? At yeah, 19? Jordan was engaged a few times. Yeah, she said First that time. she was uh, like nineteen or something yeah, to the 19. bowling guy, right? That's yeah. Right. I just was a, it was an interesting parallel. Yes. Yeah, but I don't think that she and I ever really had that. We didn't really have that conversation. So I was nineteen, and I was never gonna. I I, I don't think I thought that it was gonna go anywhere because I, um, I didn't ever want to tell my dad that I was engaged because I thought my mm. dad would kill us both. <laughs> so I never so I never said anything and then finally after I had the ring for a while then I was like well I guess I'm going to have to say something so I told my mom and I'm like well, well what do you think you think I should say something and my mm-hmm. mom's like well yeah you know you have to tell him so my dad completely threw me a curveball because I expected that when I told my dad that he would like kick John out of the house and that would be the end of it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I thought he would like make that decision You're for too me young and, because yeah. my mom, my dad was a very assertive person. And instead, he got out a bottle of champagne. Oh shoot! So <laughs> I was, com- I, I, you know, in retrospect, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. You know, I was completely. I feel like your, your dad didn't get cues with uh, men in your life very well. Right, right. Well, <laughs> with but the I, beef and then the, the yeah. champagne, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> the Italian beef, right? <laughs> he like literally has no clue what's going on in your head. Yeah, <laughs> he's not getting the signals. <laughs> not at all. He no. was too, too good of a host, right? <laughs> right. So, really like, I couldn't parallel. even celebrate because I, you know, I was, I literally was confused. You know, yeah. I was like. Wait, what the what? fuck? You're marrying you know? me off? Or? Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> so, but then I still thought, as time went on, like, I still thought that my mom and dad were going to step in and say, um, stop you're, it. You're too or, young. You know, yeah. and they didn't. And the only thing my dad ever said was that he didn't, he, that his, so... When they're planning, when they're planning the wedding, it was like my dad's wedding, so cut to another time and I had a wedding with 300 people or more on the top floor of the furniture club which was 666 Lakeshore Drive they later later changed the changed the address you know because it was 666 right oh <laughs> but I mean it was they had a they had lights in the floor and there were you know I mean there was a dance floor I mean it was this was like this huge affair and like I, as I remember, like I didn't even in, was it wasn't even able to invite all my friends because it was kind of like my dad's party, okay. right? And I just let him handle the whole thing, and I just sort of went along with it. Um. The only thing that my dad said was, you know, I don't know if you want to marry this guy because his family is really cheap. So, mm. I come from a family of abundanza, right? <laughs> and his family. And, I, and actually, there was—he had seven brothers and sisters. I thought I was getting the Waltons, you know. Oh. And then after we got married, nobody ever talked to anybody else. Oh, wow. So it would have been—it mm. was worse than if I married an only child whose family was really close. Right. But I didn't—I didn't know that at the time either. Um, so how old were you when you actually got married? Twenty. Really? Yep. Good lord! And then you finished college. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, well, then, so after I got married, right, then we had an apartment in DeKalb, and my mom and dad would come over, and then my mom and dad, after we got married, like, started saying things like, well, when are you going to have kids? And you're still in college. And I'm like, I'm in school. <laughs> Let him have the kids. I'm not, you know, I'm not having kids. <laughs> and um, they didn't, but they never told me that before. Like, if they would have said, well, we're going to go along with this because we want you to have kids, you know, I would have been like, well, just cut, cut it right there. We're not, I'm not doing that. Well, I mean, you're 20. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so... No, so I did... So, no, so I graduated. I graduated in three and a half years. John was one year older than me. He um, he was really smart, but he had issues, which I'm sure at some juncture and some, is- some issue we'll get into. But um, he did not graduate when he was supposed to. So I then went on, right on to grad school. But I didn't get a degree in teaching. I got my... my de- 
uh, degrees were all in English. Okay. Okay. And then when did you, what did you do right out of college, job-wise? Well, no, I did teach because then at the, then when he didn't graduate, I took some teaching things and I did, I did student teaching and I still graduated in three and a half years. I don't know how I did that, but I did. That's mm-hmm. how you are now though. I don't know how you do everything <laughs> you do now. I don't understand how you've had this much time. I yeah. stay busy. <laughs> I just stay really busy and it keeps me away from problems. And she's 150 <laughs> years old and she looks so great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> No, but really, you do go big or go home, you know, everything. Like, you, you know, you just have so much fun, or you make it fun for people. I make fun. I make fun, because yeah. if you don't make fun, you're miserable, point? right? Yeah. You, yeah. To make your own, you have to make your own fun. If you depend on other people for fun, you're going to wait forever. You know, so... That's what I think. Right. So, right. And I, and I feel like you've gained a certain amount of criticism over the years from certain people namely maybe um well i just meant like people that are like you know you're making it too complicated or we don't need to have that big of a party and why are we ordering two cakes and why are we ordering (laughs) extra balloons and stuff like that you know i'm just not saying anybody in particular but i do feel like there's a certain um attitude with certain people around you um, that, you know, you do always go big. Well, people think it's easy. And they I think, think that's what happens is you have a certain, there's a certain perspective about you. Like, so my job that I do right now as a mortgage banker is really hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I work a lot of hours. Mm-hmm. But I work hard and I party hard. Mm-hmm. And I like to have a lot of people around me. So, it, and I spend money. So if I make money, I spend money. But that doesn't mean either that I'm shitting thousand dollar bills, you know, so, but people think that they have that perception because for example, like on Facebook, life is not Facebook, right? But people, but (laughs) people think that because it's visual, right? And so if they see you at a restaurant or they see you going to Mexico, I don't know, with your kids, right? Or going going to to Mexico or going to Florida. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, two, that's funny. Cause yes. We were, we were gonna have you on a couple of weeks ago, and then. And I was in Florida, Florida, right? I was gone, right? So. <laughs> oh. So I funny. I helped. So I was yes, I was in Florida. It was very impromptu. Um, Jade, there was an opportunity for Jade to take some continuing education because she's a pediatric chiropractor, and there were some really good. Cause there was some really good continuing education, and she wasn't sure she was gonna go. And I said, you know what? I'll go with you. And she said, well, I don't need you to go with me. And I said, but you'll have more fun if I go with you. So that was that was the end of that. And, we, and plus, my assistant lives in Florida. So my assistant lives 20 minutes from Orlando, and that's where the classes were. So I said, well, I can go down there, and then I can work while you're in class. Okay. So we went down, and we, you know, we flew down. We got a hotel room. Jessica, my assistant, drove over from where she lives. And Jessica and I worked all day the 10 hours that jade was in class and jessica went home we did it again but we went out for dinner and we, we took pictures and we put them on facebook and i had a friend a local friend who had a problem in liberty felt like a bad problem she totaled her car and her insurance company was not stepping up and um i knew somebody from her insurance company that could help her and so she put on facebook she goes you're so wonderful she goes jan you're such a jet setter and you stopped to help me with my insurance problem. You know, and Jessica and I were laughing because we were working, like mm-hmm. we were just working our asses off, you know. But that's how you are. But the that, but the perception was that we're the Kardashians. Yeah, you're glamorous. That, that I'm the fat Kardashian. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, they've all had Fidashian. surgery anyway, so. It's... And they're, they're not all... Yeah. So well, no, but fit. you know what I mean. I mean, it's just it's just perception, you know. But we were, I think what I try to do is I try, I try to make it work. So yeah. I was still working ten hours, <laughs> but I was working ten hours in Florida, and then for fifteen minutes I put my feet up by a fireplace that we were where we were sitting outside, you know, and we had a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. Jade had a martini, and she told me I was cut off. Right? <laughs> really? <laughs> What? You're not even going anywhere. But because we were sitting there, people thought we were sitting by the fire in Florida the whole, however many days we were there, three or four days, you know. I think I saw that picture. Oh, you did? That's exactly like what that. you thought too, right? I'm like, wow, man, she traveled That jet the setter bitch. <laughs> what a Kardashian, man, honestly. <laughs> I, I guess what I'm wondering is, I know that you are 
you, that's like how you deal with things is you're always going, you're always working stuff. Do you ever take time to just sit and like be with your own thoughts or, or anything like that? Or is oh, it I like, try hard not to do that. Katie. Try hard not to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I you know I do, but I think my and I don't know I don't know if this is a, a like a natural thing. But Mary could, I know, Mary could speak to this. Like I, my joy. Everybody has a has certain things that bring them joy, mm-hmm. right? So my joy comes more from helping other people than it does from doing things for myself. Okay. So I could, and I should probably, like spend more time being a little bit more introspective, taking better care of myself. Um, I mean, if maybe, it doesn't work for you, it doesn't maybe. work for you. Well, no, I mean, but I know, I mean, I should, right? Because I'm old, and so I need to do those things. Yeah, 150. <laughs> but, um, but my, but the, my joy really does come from helping other people. Mm-hmm. So if I have to hire somebody in my business, you know, and I think that I can help them, and I can help them be a bigger, better version of themselves, or mm-hmm. maybe I recognize a talent that they have that they don't recognize themselves, or that maybe their parents didn't see in them um that's kind of the relationship that i have um with my assistant jessica so i'm not going to get into her personal story you know that wouldn't Mm -hmm. be that wouldn't be fair but um she came into my world about almost 20 years ago and she was she was very young she was a single mom of a one-year-old wow and i saw a fire in her and a spark in her and I, just, I knew that she would be really good at what we did. And I said, if you come after your regular job and you come into my office, and, I, and keep in mind, I don't sleep very much, right? So I said, if you work with me, I worked with her from 5 o'clock at night with her with her little girl there till 10, teaching mm-hmm. her the business that I did, right? Wow. And she worked with for me for five years. Then she married the DJ from Jordan's graduation party <laughs> from, from Palmer. And then she moved to Florida. And then she became a licensed loan officer. This is years later, right? Uh-huh. And now she's back. So she's been back with me for two years. But I, but I, she's not the only person, you know. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's. I guess I, I guess people are my project. Yeah, yeah, they are. Whether whether like you Your say, whether they are almost like maybe. Like you say, you need to like be more introspective or not, but maybe you don't because that's how you take care of yourself is by taking care of other people. Well, I ha- that's that's really like my that's my joy. Yeah. Right. Is help is helping other people. But it's not like a charitable thing, you know. I mean, it's 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 really my you just have these joy. connections with yeah. people and you you like to see how that connection can get better and stuff. Yeah, it's not charity for No, no, it's not it's not charitable at all. You know, it's it's um I think maybe that's the teacher in me, so I never really intended to be a teacher. I became a teacher sort of by default. But I was a good teacher. You were a good and teacher. I, I was in a really Waukegan. good teacher. And I hire my students. Yeah. So you still stay in touch with a yeah, lot I of them. Yeah, I do loans mm-hmm. for my students and I hire my students also. Train them child labor, right? Train them when they're, when they're <laughs> young they're and then young. hire them later. That's right. <laughs> and um, and I, so I, that's what made me a good teacher. You know, I mean, I think I would have been a good lawyer too. Mm-hmm. But I didn't become a lawyer. Be, and this is this is kind of sad and stupid on my part. So... My dad wanted to pay for John Leisure and I to go to law school. My dad went to law school. So I, this, I don't know if you know Your this. Your dad went My to law school? My dad went to law school. Okay, I did not. And he went to law school for two years. And just at the time when he was get, coming to the end of his two years, they changed the format and they went to three years. But my dad was married, just bought a house, and I was a baby. Mm-hmm. Or I was two and a half. Mm-hmm. And he was working full time and going to law school. And my dad had a great personality. They wanted him to stay in school. And, but they changed it to three years. So he would have to go another whole year. Mm. And I think when you're 20, 27 or 28, you know, you're like a year. Mm-hmm. You know, that's forever. And he mm-hmm. said, I can't go another year. I've got a kid at home and I've got, you know, and I'm working. And so the law school, he went to John Marshall and they said that, or DePaul, and they said that they would pay for him to stay in school. Right. But he didn't feel like he had the time. So he quit. And I think he was always disappointed that he didn't do that. Okay. So he wanted John Leisure and I to go to law school and he would have paid for us both to go to Northwestern. This is after we graduated and after we were teaching and stuff. Mm -hmm. But by then I bought a house in Waukegan. I was already teaching for two years. 
And I, it just felt like it was like so much trouble. But then, and also John Leisure didn't want to go. Mm-hmm. So he felt like he had to stay and be a teacher. So I was like, well, if I leave, this was in my mind. I mean, and there was no women in law school, right? right. This was yeah, way back really, a long time ago. Time. Yes. Before Elle Woods and Legally yes. Blonde. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's what, that would have been my story right there. Yeah. So Legally that would have been me. Yeah, that yeah, would have been my story. Sure. Legally tall and blonde. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't have been Elle Woods. <laughs> L squared. You're definitely taller than yeah, L squared. Yes. <laughs> so, but in nothing. my head, you know, in my head, it, um, if I would have gone to law school, mm-hmm. he and it, John Leisure was a little bit insecure and he, jealous. So in my head, I was kind of being kind to him that I didn't go by myself. I was waiting for him to say, "Okay, let's go," and he didn't want to go. So I'm thinking to myself, how I was in in grad school when I was in grad school, I was with all guys in study groups and stuff. You know, and he had a hard time dealing with that. Mm. So I thought, okay, I'm going to be in law school with all these guys that are going to be as smart as I am. And they're going to be, you know, I thought I would like meet somebody else, right? And then he <laughs> would be all jealous. So so I didn't go. I was waiting for him to kind of catch up and he never did. Okay. So I didn't go. Mm. So. How long until um, you had children? I was 29 when Jordan was born. So you wow. were married for a long time. I was time. married for a long time, and I thought Jordan was an ovarian cyst. She knows that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and what made you realize it wasn't? Because <laughs> I finally I went to the doctor. I was four months pregnant, and I went to the doctor. <laughs> four months? Yeah, and the doctor said, I'm going to give you a I mean, just to, just to, to, because we do everything, we're going to give you a pregnancy test. And I'm like, I don't need that. You know, I don't need that. I'm not pregnant. And then they, when they called me, this was really, this was really kind of weird. So they called me and they said, congratulations. Like, I thought I won Publishers Clearinghouse. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, who is this? You know, and again, I'm like, no fucking way. And they're like, I said, what name do you have? I did. I said, I said, who are you calling? You know, and I, had, I made him spell my name. And, um, and I was real, I was like, sort of, I was shocked, you know, and not, I was not prepared for that. Okay. And I thought I was going to lose my job and I, we had just built a house, you know, so I had a lot of responsibilities. Where, where did, is that the house? That's the house. Green, yeah. That was the house in Green Oaks. Yeah. Wow. So I was, um, I was taken aback by that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you had mentioned that that wasn't something you planned to, you like, once you had kids, it was like you're all in, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't something that you thought about well, I wasn't in thinking high school. Of, well, I think, no, no. Well, yeah. not necessarily. So I think like a lot of kids in high school, like when I was with my boyfriend, you know, we would talk about stuff like that. And I probably we named our children, you know. <laughs> but um, but that's just sort of like. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Just that she, you thought she was an ovarian cyst. I did. No, I did. I, to- I totally did. <laughs> And, um, well, because I'm so tall, you know, I was, I'm so tall, like I didn't gain any weight then, yeah, right, 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 until right. I found out I was pregnant, and then I just ate pudding for the next, you know, six months and gained <laughs> 70 pounds. But before that, you know, <laughs> if I would never have known until she came out, I probably would have gained two pounds. And <laughs> she would have been real healthy. Yeah, and I would have been been ahead of the game. I don't know. No, but I, did, I, didn't, I didn't really think about that. I was more focused on school, and I was more focused on... Um, education and I was also very conservative so I didn't sleep with anybody before I got married which was a mistake Mm. ladies if you're listening (laughs) (laughs) I think times have changed a little bit now yeah well it was just in the 60s right this was in the 60s so I had you know that's pretty conservative all my friends were doing it but me but I didn't know that because they they just didn't talk about it yeah Mm. And then did you have Jade right after or not right after but did you try to have kids right after no no um, I decided when Jordan, well, Jordan, when Jordan was four, um, she said for Christmas she wanted a real baby and an easy bake oven. <laughs> so. <laughs> and you gave her both? And I wanted, ha- and I wanted her to have a sister. I mean, this was, it's really crazy because I wanted her to have a sister. I had in my head. So she was planned by my friend Shelly and I. And, um. What? <laughs> Jade you didn't was? know this Jade no. was yeah Jade was planned by my friend Shelly and I so I was <laughs> I, you know I would say that my relationship was sort of 
I don't know if I would say questionable. You know, I mean, I was in, I was in because of Jordan, but I knew for a long time that like we weren't like totally on the same page. I mean, John Leisure had a lot of good qualities. Who's a good person, mm-hmm. and in a whole other episode, if you want to do it, you know, I mean, he had a lot of emotional problems and and mental issues that grew as our relationship, you know, continued, right. or as our life continued, and. Um, so I wasn't planning on having another baby, but I decided that I, I took care of my uncle who had ALS for a long time. And my uncle passed away when Jordan was four. And I was like, you know what? I don't want Jordan to have to go through anything like this by herself. Okay. So I'm going to give her a sister. And my friend Shelly, who was my neighbor across the street, decided that this would be a really good thing to do. So she and I planned Jade. And we had Jade, and she was a girl, how and Jordan you, got a sister. How did you plan Jade with Shelly? That was <laughs> like, just like our conversation, you know, we just then, over so coffee. you had sex. Yes, yes. Well, that was, John was not really a participant in that. John was just sort of a donor. And we... <laughs> First kid was an ovarian cyst, so the second kid had a donor of a... Father. It was planned by the neighbor across planned the street. Planned by the neighbor across the Shelley. street. Shelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did she get, did Jordan get the Easy Bake Oven too? Well, Jordan got the Easy Bake Oven. And then <laughs> and then when, um, when Jade was three months old, Jordan was five. And Jade, so Jade was like Jameson. Jade could talk from the time she was really little. And when she said a sentence when she was three months old. Jordan came and sat by me on the couch and Jade was laying across me and Jade had her little foot and little little hand hanging down mm-hmm. and Jade started kicking Jordan and Jade said, no, no, my mom. <gasps> she said those four words and Jordan goes, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, your mom? <laughs> no fucking way. Right, See? that's right. <laughs> the, the cycle continues. <laughs> exactly. So, and I said to Jordan, I go, Jordan, you wanted this baby. She said, no, there's a baby doll called the real baby. And that's what I wanted. I wanted the real baby doll in the Easy Bake Oven. I didn't want her. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's a great ending to that story. (laughs) If you ask Jordan and you interview Jordan again, she'll tell you exactly the same thing. Yeah, I said, sorry, you weren't clear. (laughs) So we planned a whole baby. We're trying to help you. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to give you whatever you wanted, and sorry. That's funny. Oh, my gosh. I, I would like to talk. Uh, um, well, I I had made a list of questions, and Jan's like, that's like five episodes. I and think, I we, could, yeah. And I said, we'll have you on for five episodes at a minimum. But I, because I would like to talk about the differences in your, in your girls, you know, just just sure. purely from a mental health standpoint and that you know they five years difference and just how they different personality and now they're close and they work together and they're both doctors and all of that you know and just different things that they they went through that's one topic i also would we're like, not going to talk about that now okay <laughs> no right okay. I, right i don't think no so. i think we should probably wrap, wrap it, up it up pretty up. soon yeah and then um i also want to talk about the mental health uh, issues with John Leisure, if you're okay with that. I'm okay Jan, with that. Or uh, Jordan talked about her dad, you know, on this episode. Yeah. On, on this podcast. And um, and I also want to talk about your cancer. Okay, that's a whole nother. So we got three more for sure. Okay. Because I want to talk about your cancer and how, how that came about that you found that. Well, I'm just, I'm working really hard to pretend that that's not happening. <laughs> Okay, but how did you, just real quick, let's do a teaser. Okay. all right. You fell down this, right? So I bought <laughs> I bought a white golden retriever puppy that I intended to give to Jordan because I didn't know Jordan was in a serious relationship. And I thought this white golden retriever puppy would be a good good bait. <laughs> for, for not being yeah, in that. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> so um, I did not know that she was going to move in with her boyfriend. So Jordan moved to the city. I didn't want the puppy to go to the city. So I kept the puppy with me. And um, I had the puppy upstairs. I think this was this was like after my mom had passed away. And I wasn't down sleeping in my mom's bedroom in the main floor of my house. And I was yes. upstairs. Yeah. And um, I got up to take the dog out. And I th- there had been a storm. And so the puppy was afraid. So I had the puppy on the leash in bed. So that she would stay close to me and she wouldn't get scared and, um, you know, and, and get off the bed, et cetera, et cetera. 
So I took the puppy downstairs about six o'clock in the morning and I forgot that I had the leash on the puppy. So I'm at the top of the stairs, like 18 steps, big, high, high, steep stairway. And as I'm going down the stairs, I look down and I said to myself, this is a really bad idea. Take the leash off the dog. And I leaned over to take the leash off the dog and I lost my balance and I fell down 18 stairs with the dog. Luckily, mm. the dog was okay, but I landed on my back um, fortunately did not hit my head and uh, I couldn't get up and I couldn't speak so I was calling John who lives with me and I'm kind of going ah. and, <laughs> you know and I, I, I literally had the wind knocked out of me and mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't speak so after a while I think he realized I wasn't there and he came to the top of the stairs and he's like oh my god should we call call 911 and I said no just help me up and make coffee so he helped me up and I my arm was like this it was sticking out to the side and he's like are you sure we shouldn't call 911 I'm like no just go make coffee so he made coffee and I sat in front of the fireplace had a couple <laughs> cups of coffee and um eventually decided that I shouldn't like lay down and just go to sleep because maybe I would di would die and not wake up and I did go to the emergency room and there was a, like a whole barrage of tests and a lot of bullshit that we went through and um uh they wouldn't let me leave because I couldn't raise my hips to pee in a cup so that they could release me from the from the emergency room in Gray's Lake. And the doctor wanted, like, and I'm very tall, right? So the doctor wanted me to just stand up and let some little, um, little girls that were CNAs, like, help me stand up so that I could pee in the cup to her satisfaction and I could leave. So I said, I can't do it. And I couldn't, I literally could not raise my body off of the table. There was something else wrong with me that they hadn't diagnosed, so which which was not the cancer. It was that I had a fractured pelvis, but they didn't they couldn't see it. So she came back and she said, "Well, if you don't pee in the cup, I don't know if your people want to hear this. If you don't if you don't pee in the cup, uh, we're gonna have to give you a CAT scan." And I said, "Bitch, I said I'm 65, <laughs> I'm old. You're gonna find something. Go for it. I've got good insurance." <laughs> so. They wheeled me in to um, to give me a CAT scan. I actually passed out, and they went and got the paddles. I don't know if you know this. No. Because they gave me some. I had was on some kind of painkiller, and it, I had a reaction to it. But they gave me the CAT scan, and two minutes after I had the CAT scan, a doctor from the emergency room came in and said, nobody wants to really hear this, but you have cancer. Hmm. And I was like, well, all right, and you have a nice day. But you also punctured a spleen well that collapse, so lungs, i did so the other pelvis. thing was yes so i had five broken ribs i had a fractured pelvis i had a dislocated elbow i had a little bit of a fracture in my wrist and a punctured spleen and a punctured spleen yes so the punctured spleen was the biggest deal so at that juncture after they did that and they found all those other things wrong with me after about eight hours in the emergency room then they rushed me to the hospital and, and then, I didn't have my phone with me, so I couldn't take a picture. <laughs> I couldn't put it on Facebook. <laughs> but that's how they found out she has cancer. Right. Was because you couldn't pee in the cup. Well, I couldn't. Yeah, I, I would never have. I would never. If they released me from the emergency room, I would never have. I'd be dead right now. Wow. See? Resilience. <laughs> she falls down 18 steps. Everything's wrong with her body, but silver lining they found cancer right like mm -hmm. i feel like my dad pushed me down the stairs just my dad's spirit just said bitch and then we'll find it yeah so yep. you can go to the next step yeah yeah see you know i was thinking about this because we were talking about resiliency and like kind of finding the, the i don't know the happiness and stuff i know that you're kind of naturally like that but do you think it's teachable like like do you think it's a skill that you could learn if someone I think is not so. naturally I think so. I think it, I, what I think is, I don't know if it's something that you can learn. I think it's perspective. Yeah. I think that you Good can point. gain perspective. Hmm. That's really, I really think you can, I think you poignant. can gain yeah. perspective. Like, I don't know if I was, I don't, I don't think that I was just like born resilient. I don't think that. I think that, um, hmm. my dad was hard on me, right? So I, you know, I, I don't know if I would say like had to watch my P's and Q's kind of, you know, like my, so my parents didn't like really hold me back, 
but mm-hmm. and they allowed me to be myself but they allowed me my dad allowed me to be myself like within certain parameters mm-hmm. you know or I probably would be like stripping in Vegas or something I don't know my dad you know my dad gave me pretty good um got it you know yeah you could have been I was your, afraid you know your, I was I was afraid of my dad mm-hmm. and so in you certain knew, ways you knew what you could push and what yes, you couldn't yes yes yeah. yeah so I was I was a pretty I was a good kid but I think that having my boyfriend have cancer was um, was a huge deal, and and that he survived that, you know. I mean, we're still friends yeah, even after all these day. years. Yeah. Um. But I think that you, you can gain perspective. Mm-hmm. So I think that maybe, maybe it's something that people can strive for, because I think you have a happier life, if you can. Um, I don't know. Turn turn a sow's ear into a silk purse, you know like those old adages you know if you can yeah. try to see try to see the humor or the positive in some negative thing so mary's right you know i mean i fell down the stairs i had all these things wrong with me i could have bled to death if i would have if i would have done what i first wanted to do which was like say screw it and not go to the emergency room and lay down like i couldn't even i couldn't even sit on the toilet so there was something wrong with me because i knew if i sat on the toilet i couldn't stand up so I had to go to the bathroom. I made John go get one of those Bob Chin's Mai Tai cups, right? And mm-hmm. I peed in the Mai Tai cup standing up. And then I, then I went to sit on the bed, and I was like, well, I'm just going to lay down here for like 20 minutes. And then as I was ready to do that, I was like, this is probably not a good idea. I probably should just go to the emergency room. But, but I still didn't call the ambulance. You know, I called the emergency rooms all around to see which ones didn't have a wait. And then I made John take me there. Mm. But had things not like if if the um if the sequence of events had not panned out that way you know and if i wasn't just so um uncooperative with the doctor you know and made them give me the cat scan i would never have known hmm. yep and that's yeah. perspective on yeah and it. that's yeah. perspective i guess right. is what i'm trying to say yeah no, yeah that's a good See, point. That, that sort of says it all i mean that can be you know a whole kind of a synopsis of your personality like I don't think I'm more I don't think I'm more cheerful than other people I don't think that I don't think I'm better than anybody or that I'm more cheerful I think that I try to find I try I do try to find perspective in you know in the different situations or I would like I stayed married for 36 years even though I knew it wasn't that probably wasn't the best thing I wasn't with the love of my life Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, but I take responsibility for that. So instead of saying, well, I was in a miserable marriage and I should never have been in it and I'm a victim, you know, I just felt like I did what I had to do and I did my own thing. Mm-hmm. And then you still lived a lot after that, you know? So oh, yeah. You just keep on living, man. Like, you're not every You got to live until year. you don't. <laughs> right. Yep. Right. But that's, mm-hmm. yeah. I love that. This would be my next tattoo after that, right? <laughs> Live until you don't. After I get shit done. <laughs> I get shit done. Yeah. And maybe no fucking way. Yeah, that's a fucking lot way of people would be a good use that. Yeah. I have one cheek left on the back. <laughs> Perfect. All three of them. Yeah. That's where we'll put I get shit done, right? On my other cheek. Yeah, on the on the cheek. That's brilliant. You should do that. I get shit. <laughs> Done. Done. <laughs> perfect place. Yeah, perfect placement, honestly. <clears throat> but well, I'd say round two with Jan Leisure will be a continuation of all one of, of these, these topics. Or all of them, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you are a fascinating guest. You, you are, are a colorful, wonderful human being. Thanks, you guys. You mm-hmm. live like nobody I know lives, <laughs> and I mean that in the best possible way. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm proud to know you, and I'm proud that you like me. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Vice versa. <laughs> I'm proud that you like me. <laughs> you know, it's, it was really, it was really great. I'll never forget in uh, the step class, you would go. We got in trouble. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> up, and, cause up, up, down, down, and she'd go, ooh, ooh. And, and we got in trouble. And then many the guys times. would go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, Terry was in that class too, right? And Terry, that's where I met Terry, Terry and Seymour. And we were and we were loud and it was seven in the morning. 
and we got Jeez. we got reprimanded by management regularly because, regularly because we were so loud that's crazy that you would get reprimanded for something that's clearly bringing good engagement with, good engagement with your customers we yeah. had 40 people in the class yeah Doesn't and make any sense. We, it, i was probably we had terry the, was walking on his hands i was going <laughs> <laughs> in her spandex and her that's big so red bow. do you gotta go potty that's baby that's such a fun memory that was a time i think so I think so. Yep. He's well, we can... Yeah, we'll wrap it up till next time everybody. Well, I have really enjoyed Jen, this. Thank Jen you Leisure, guys for Jen having Leisure. Jen. on Jan. It's been pre- it's been awesome. Yep. And we'll see you next week for the next episode. Oh, next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pencil you in. Please. <laughs> unless you go to Florida again, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unless we have some spontaneous trip. <laughs> Things change in a few days in her world. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you again. for listening and watching and till next time. And we'll thanks, see you, next you guys. Time. Thank you. Peace. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.